Okay, so we're always pushing ourselves. And so at this late date, I'm looking at the overall shape and deciding, okay, what are some big things I need to do that are so important they need to affect the silhouette? And I brought in these bear claws, and then I realized, well, that bear claw looks weird because it should be overlapping. It should be attached to the wing, so it shouldn't be behind these porcupine quills. And so just little comprehension checks like that help. So let me take that and move it up above. Command right bracket will move it up through the layer. And so just something that simple helps. And I also brought in some new legs. Because I wanted that kind of furry um, haunch to the back leg. That didn't look so bird-like, so avian. So I'm going to duplicate that. Command J, not Command J. Delete that. Transform it. Cute little squirrel legs. What's so nice is I'm not trying to steal the, the feet. I've already got the feet. And I know from my positioning where I want those feet to be. So now it's just lining those feet up with the ones I have and giving it more of this kind of furry punch appearance. I think it's very helpful. Okay. Then I'm going to do something I don't usually do, but I'm going to go to filter and sharpen because it's a slightly fuzzy reference. And I'm going to say a smart sharpen and just very subtle remembers my settings, reduce the noise a little bit. That'll make it easier to cut out and easier to blend with what's behind. So not all of our reference is as sharp as the other reference, but we can use it strategically and put it in place. So what other things do I need to work with? Well, I've got some major kind of colors that I like, these strong accent colors, but I need to blend them in and make them work. The anatomy here on the shoulder is missing but I just don't have reference for it. So I can either adapt what I have or I can use some other tricks to bring the textures I need in. And so I'll be uh, working with that next once I get these legs figured out. And then I'm toying with whether I want something added to the tail or not. You know, that little shape at the end. But that seems like a little, you know, finishing thing once I have time. But what I like, I brought in some um, flower reference in my references. Let's see where I put that. These birds of paradise embellishments. And that might be fun to use on the tail. And this one would be really easy to cut out because it's on a nice white background. So that might be a, a late addition I do. One of these. So always thinking of your silhouette. Other things I'll need to do, that very furthest back layer, I still need to cut that out. I think I'm just going to do that by hand with my stylus and my eraser brush to get that furry belly. And what needs to still be blended with the tail and with the talons. But I am close. Just like your, your composite landscape, once it starts to come together, once you've gotten a lot of the hard edges taken care of, the rest is just polishing it up. So I guess if I use the metaphor last week, setting this up that it's like assembling a car now we've put all the parts together on the same chassis but today it was about finding the right accessories right to really make the car into something it's like those customization reality shows do you put a raised hood on it do you uh, put a fin on the back how extreme how high does that go do you drop the canopy you know that kind of thing so you can see that this is sharpened quite a bit 
just in little areas, it helps bring out the texture. So that's what that smart sharpen filter can help with. If you do it too much, it becomes way too pixelated. So always with subtlety. I'll do a rough cutout. Making sure to leave all those fur edges. There we go, delete that. That allows me to work with the warp a little bit better get it placed. Drop that a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to play with levels deep in the midtones and maybe limit the shadows. Limit the highlights a little bit because it's in shadow, it's underneath. And then I'm going to play with color balance. Get a little bit more red, a little bit more blue in the shadows. So I can see it working with these other textures I have. The highlights get rid of a little bit of that yellow. Okay. Now, I use a 100% low opacity, soft edge brush, and I get rid of these hard edges, seaming these things together. And you see how it starts to blend in with the fur that's already there. And let's see, the legs that are behind. I have a lot of different layers going. Remember, we only need five. But you do whatever is best. I find those legs. So I'm going to use auto select for layer here. There it is. And I want to erase away softly that background. really reveal these new legs. Okay, and then lastly, I can dodge and burn. But you see, I think that shape is just a little bit more helpful. And I can bring the, the brightness from underneath still through. But I want to actually dodge those squirrel legs and get some highlights on the edges like that, where they're catching the light, like that. And then I can always burn the midtones a little bit. If I overdo it with the dodge. Where I think it's getting too colorful. It's, dodge and burn is so powerful, you really have to make sure it's soft and the low exposure to kind of separate out that shadow and to blend it with this dark fur on the stomach I definitely want to to burn some of these midtones so if you do it too much it starts to look bruised All right and then I can start erasing at lower opacities to blend it in. So now it's all going to be about the, the finishing touches on these. These different textures and how do we bring them together and we have some magic tricks for that. But before I get to that, I need to cut it all out cleanly. 
I also, while I'm working on the dodging and burning, I need to burn down these wings more. The brightness is kind of nice, but I definitely need, I think, to play with their levels and limit their highlights a little bit more. They'll still seem kind of bright. But they're just screaming right now. I'm just limiting the white a little bit. And then I can get in with that burn tool. And make them look more dimensional. And this is only on midtones. And then underneath the wing, I need to burn down certain things as well. Where there should be shadow, I need to make sure there's shadow. And then on the wing itself, not the wing, let's see, it's this, this thing. I need to burn that when it's underneath the wing, for sure. All right. So how do we clean up the outside? It's a good time to save. And now I'm looking at the silhouette and I want a clean silhouette. So I need to clean up the bottom here. My top and tail is pretty good. I've got little things I need to clean up, but I'll show you how to catch those later. But for right now, I go to the move tool. I have auto select layer. That will help me select these elements. I'm going to use my eraser at 100% opacity at about 80% hardness at a small enough size that I feel confident in. I can do a rough pass using my stylus it's pressure sensitive starting to really kind of cut these out I can burn it as I go in certain areas Every time you pick up your stylus, it will start a new section eraser. So I'm using it like a, a cleaning up brush on the outside. It's like um, using a router tool and a little buffer disk to clean up the welds on the car. All this extra junk we don't need. It's on the outside. And again, because it's a pressure sensitive brush, I can kind of create my own organic, in this case, fur and paper it and play with it within reason. This isn't a digital painting assignment yet, so we don't need to to recreate our own silhouette. But we definitely want to get rid of the stuff we don't want. Now kind of on purpose, I chose a lot of textures that are hard to clean up. Feathers, fur, they're soft edged, you know, really complicated. And so, the trick to that is not to get too hung up on the details, just to make sure everything is connected. And then you can use the soften, refine edge at the end. So at some point I can even just create my own. Now, how do I deal with these little highlights? Well, I'm just going to use my burn tool, and I, instead of midtones, I'm going to set it to highlights, and then I'm going to burn those down. 
So they become firm, even if they were 